Sorry, there's my microphone. Um, I'd like to call this to order. Can we get a roll call? Yes. Uh, Dan Bickford? Here. Cindy Carlton? Here. Ken Fox? Ryan McCarthy? Here. Linda Maricall? Here. Kathleen Pishney? Here. Stephanie Price? Here. Dr. Ellen Tuthill? Present. Dean Velasco? Here. We have two absentees, uh, Anita Batista and Michelle Dressler. Great. Let the record show that this regular spark meeting is now called to order. Let's approve the agenda. Has everyone had a chance to read the agenda? I'll move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Ah, we have a second. Let's call for a vote. Okay. Hey, just so you guys know, and I'm probably you're probably aware that you had a revision get emailed out to you, but the one in front of you is the correct one. Um, let's go backwards. Dean Velasco. Yes. Dr. Todd Hill. Yes. Stephanie Price. Yes. Kathleen Pishney. Yes. The Miracle. Yes. Ryan McCarthy. Yes. Ken Fox. Yes. Cindy Carrollton. Yes. Dan Bickford. Yes. Motion is approved. Okay. I number two. The agenda is approved. Now. Let's talk about the approval of the meeting minutes for August 3rd. Has everyone had a, a chance to review? Okay. Motion to approve is uh, presented. Second. We'll get uh, Stephanie Price as a second on that one. Let's call for a vote, Ms. Brian Ann. McCarthy. Approve. Ken Fox. Cindy Carlton. Yes. Dan Bigford. Yes. Lindy, Linda Miracall. Yes. Kathleen Pishney. Yes. Stephanie Price. Yes. Dr. Todd Hill. Aye. Dean Velasco. Yes. Motion is approved. Okay. Um, Let's move on to item number four, San Diego River Park Foundation. And we have a special presenter tonight, Sarah Hutchman, Chief Operating Officer. Welcome. So really quick, uh, I invited Sarah out today because um, I just want to say that they have such an amazing mission plan here in the community. They uh, focus on habitat, restoration, cleanups in our community, and they are absolute champions here in the city of Santee. They go above and beyond to make sure our riverbed is clean. They're amazing to work with. I know Sam enjoys working with them. And I essentially wanted everyone on this esteemed group to know all the amazing work that they do and any possible advantageous efforts that we could do to partner with them in the future. So um, with that said, um, I want to introduce you to an amazing person, Sarah, and she's going to talk about the River Park Foundation. <laughs> yeah, we're going to change your uh, view on your slides real quick. We are seeing behind the scenes slides. There, there we go. F F5 or, yeah, there you go. Ah, beautiful. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. Is her, is her yeah. microphone working? Okay. Could you? It does not sound appear to be on. Do you want to point that at least towards your mouth? They act like it's on. I don't think it's on. So that means folks on the far end might not be able to hear that. Is well, it's the it's the folks that are watching us from home won't be able to hear you. Um, is there a green light on your base? Oh. Um, do we have a wireless mic? Maybe she can just uh, handheld. Do we have those available for? They're looking for something green. Sam, that's your, that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just the cable wasn't plugged in. Hey, look at Sam is now the <laughs> AV guy. Yay. Thank you, Sam. Okay, you deserve a raise. <laughs> yeah, well, now we have to put him as an yeah. IT guy. <laughs> Well, thank you again. There we go. <laughs> now I can. Now everybody can hear me. Um, 
as I was saying, I'm sure we've crossed paths with a lot of members of the of Spark in the past. At one of our previous events, the River Park Foundation has been working since 2001, and we've been working out in Santee since almost the beginning. So um, thank you for giving us a chance to come chat with you guys. And I'm going to do a quick version of some background just in case there's anybody who's not familiar with our organization. Um, the San Diego River Park Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit. We work along the entire length of the San Diego River, um, from Julian all the way to Ocean Beach. So uh, Santee represents one of the major the cities in our lower river, and one of the areas where the m many people get to experience the river because of all the open space along the river in Santee. So we do a whole lot of different programs. We do land acquisition, especially up in the mountains. Um, we do a lot of park and trail advocacy work. We have education programs. We do outreach and, and engagement. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about our Trash Free River program and um, some of our research that we do related to water quality monitoring. So in Santee, as I said, we do education programs. Those are fee-free um, school-based programs and as well as family programs. I'm not going to talk about it too much today because it's less connected to the work that you all do. Um, but I just wanted to say it out loud because we've got, uh, those are an awesome opportunity for any of the schools. We offer those um, on location in Santee as well as at Mission Trails. So, um, and in other locations in San Diego. We do community cleanups. I'm gonna get into this quite a bit, but lots of different locations all throughout the city. We do data collection um, and trash surveys. That's one of the things that I think really sets our program apart, and I'll be talking about that a little bit. And then we do water quality monitoring at seven locations in the city of Santee, where we do kind of some baseline water testing um, every month. So where we work is basically along the entire river in Santee. So each of these sections highlighted is an area that we're active. So the most of the San Diego or San Diego River bed, as well as Forester Creek, um, which goes down south of the 52, and um, connecting into Lakeside to the east and into Mission Trails to the west. So for our Trash Free River program, we have three different teams that kind of build this program. The first is our river assessment field team. They go out at least two days a week uh, to document trash along the San Diego River. And then we use that data to inform both our trash cleanup efforts and our advocacy work. So in Santee, we come out into, to Santee at least twice a month, usually. I think last, last year was um, more than twice a month to update that data on an ongoing basis so that we can kind of keep a clear picture of what's going on with the river condition in Santee. And as you might imagine, the trash changes all the time as new trash gets washed in or gets introduced in other ways. Um, if we get a storm, a lot of times we'll see big changes related to flooding. Uh, encampments are a big source of trash, so we track that as a source as well. So this allows us to have a pretty current picture of how much trash is in the riverbed in, sand, in the city at any given moment. Um, the River Rescue Team is our team of small, a small team of volunteers, but they are small but very mighty. They come out in groups of maybe sometimes as few as four or five people, up to 20 or so people. It really just depends on our typical size. But these guys are extremely experienced. They are very familiar with the riverbed. They've been trained, and we trust them quite a lot to do a lot of work independently. And they um, have experience in working in areas where there's potential hazards like active encampments, uh, hazardous material, stuff like that. We know we can trust them to interact with those things safely. Um, so that team gets deployed twice a week, every week, um, year round. And then our clean and green team is geared toward. Uh, engaging community members of all experience levels. So many of those events are family friendly, they're large community cleanups, and we use all of the data that we collect to select locations where we can safely bring people to have kind of a first time experience in the river that's meaningful and safe and doesn't feel too scary. So um, we deploy those teams strategically based on the trash that we document. This is sort of what I was saying. This, this, this data-informed model is what sets us apart. So this map, um, there's a little screenshot of this, but this is a live map on our website that anybody can look at. It's, we call it Mapler. Um, it's a custom app that we had developed um, with a, a web developer so that we can use smartphones to collect data um, in the field. And that data goes live onto our map. 
Um, I did a little screenshot here. So this is, for example, the city of Santee, mo most of it. And you can see the different icons. We collect data by uh, source. So that's you know inactive encampments, active encampments, stormwater debris, litter, all those kinds of things. And then as we collect the data, each of those pins has photos, descriptions, estimations of volume, um, any sort of information that we might need to know in order to plan a cleanup. So that might say, we're gonna need a shovel, <laughs> we're gonna need waders to access this area. Um, or it might have navigation information, like if, if you have to cross the river, it might say, you know, here's a crossing so that you can access this area, this site. So this allows us to deploy our cleanups incredibly effectively so that we aren't just kind of sending people out, having them wander around, look for trash. Um, we can take a team, we can say, hey, leader, take your group, you're gonna target these 10 pins in this area. Make sure you grab a pair of waders, you're gonna need it. So that uh, means that we have the right tools for the job, not just the tools, but also like the human resources that we can make sure we aren't sending. If we need to send Marines, we can do that. If we need to send Girl Scouts, we can do that too. So we have the right tools for the job so that everybody has a really meaningful experience. Um, so last, last fiscal year in Santee, um, as you may know that the city of Santee um, has al allocated some funds to, the, to support the River Park Foundation through the waste management contract. So that's um, in part what funds this work. Um, we also collect or solicit our own donations and uh, grants to fund this work. And you may have heard that uh, Joel Anderson recently awarded another grant to support the work that we do um, in District 2, which includes all of Santee as well as a few parts of San Diego and East County. So um, we're hoping to actually step this up in the coming year because we've got a little bit more resources and wiggle room. <laughs> yes. So as I said, we did 30 assessments um, out in Santee last year. We removed 21 tons of trash and engaged 227 volunteers. So it's been a very um, awesome uh, effort here. Um, so what does it currently look like? Unfortunately, we are still seeing an uptick in trash despite having removed tons and tons of trash. Um, but this data allows us to kind of help track what's going on. You can see when we have, um, for example, in the last two months, a reduction in encampment-related trash, active encampment-related trash, um, that how that impacts the, the condition of the riverbed. So then I'm gonna switch gears and talk a second about our River Watch program, which is our water quality monitoring program. So these are all of our water quality monitoring sites, um, close up on Santee um, into some other parts of East County, not all in the city limits. So our team has been collecting water quality data since 2005 out in the San Diego River. So that, well, they do it every month. Um, and that data helps us kind of develop a baseline of what the condition of the, the river is. It, the river changes a lot. Um, sorry, I actually have a picture of this. The river changes a lot month to month. So in the summer, when the, the temperatures get up and the flows get low, our water quality out here gets very poor. And in the winter, when we have rain and fresh water, a lot of times the water gets much better. So um, we kind of have a long track record of being able to track the what is, what is a normal fluctuation in water quality. And this lets us you know, kind of be the first eyes to alert for any potential issues. Um, we've also been, because we're out poking around in the river all the time, a lot of times we're the first ones to notice when there's an algal bloom or something else that needs to get posted or something like that. So um, we've been uh, doing that for a long time. We also have developed a rapid response team to investigate uh, reports from community members of bad smells, fish kills, algal blooms, overgrowth, that kind of stuff, so that we can visit the site that they're ask, they're checking and, and determine next steps. Sometimes it's sort of a natural occurrence. Sometimes it's something that needs some investigation. Um, and then it's also allowed us to pursue projects that address water quality issues. Um, I think I've spoken to some of you before, but maybe not as a group, about the um, aerator project that's happening out near the Walmart ponds on the north side of the river, but on the, by the bridge where the Walmart is. And um, this is a project that is in partnership with the city and with the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation to test out a phase two pilot for artificially adding air to the river. Think like fish aquarium. It's just a really big version of that where we're trying to pump uh, 
compressed air into the river to help combat very, very low dissolved oxygen, which results usually in algal problems and bad smells and all that kind of stuff. So um, we are just in the early phase of getting this thing operational. Um, there was a version that launched before the pandemic and was decided to be too noisy um, for, it was having an impact on the neighbors nearby. So we've completely redesigned the aerator and added a brand new compressor. So that is out there and functional, though it's not yet running its program due to some uh, tech issues at USBR, but they're coming back out next month to get that um, hopefully running on a regular basis. But if anybody from the group wants to just see it, how it works, I, we can do a, we can run a test on it manually, even though it's not running automatically yet. So happy to do that if anybody's interested. Um, so, I mean, this is sort of the short version. I know I was asked to make sure we open it up for questions too. So um, here's a few upcoming events if anybody wants to check out any of these programs in action. Uh, River Watch, the monthly water quality team is September 15th and October, ooh, that says 15th, but it should say October 13th. I will have to change that. Um, our fall homeless census is next week on the 16th. Um, we are hosting the East County site for Coastal Cleanup Day, which will be at Forester Creek. Um, and we are also doing our River Blitz trash survey in uh, October, and we've got a big cleanup in November. So lots of cool stuff happening and lots of opportunities to check it out. So yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Yeah. Cindy. When you, when you do the water quality, what specifically are you checking? I mean, there's a lot of numbers there, but... Sure. No headings. Yes. So we look for different parameters, that are mostly chem water chemistry as well as nutrients. So we're looking at uh, dissolved oxygen, temperature, uh, conductivity, pH. Let's see if I can remember the other ones. Something else. And then we check for uh, nitrates and phosphates. So no, no bacterial monitoring in these, these tests. That's done by other organizations, but we do all the chem water chemistry. So... Um, I have a few questions, and then I'll, I'll open up to the rest of you folks. Sure. Um, do you guys have drones at your disposal and, and, and to, to survey some of these areas as well? Because some of them are a little less accessible or a little less or more dangerous to access. Yeah. Well, you'd be surprised. Our teams genuinely walk on foot on almost every section of the river other than areas that are underwater. <laughs> um, but I will say... Uh, we do not have a drone operator on our staff, but we have a, a really awesome volunteer who actually lives out in Santee who comes out and works with us all the time. So um, he's working in a volunteer capacity, but he, we, we have the ability to engage him in that kind of stuff quite often. Okay. Um, also, uh, I want to talk specifically because I saw the bodo uh, bulldozer I icon because um, uh -huh. I know exactly where I'm talking about because uh -huh. I've walked it with a couple of the council members. Um, sure. Uh, West uh, West Mass Park. Okay. Uh, on the other side of the bridge. Yep. Um, that's been a disaster for the last three years, uh, at, at least, because I, I, I started walking it uh, three years ago. Um, and it's a big, it's a heavy lift. It's not like a, it's not 20 guys with trash bags and, and, right. and that. So what is, how, how is your ongoing effort on the, on the West Mass Park? The encampment, I'm sure you're very familiar with. I'm sure your organization knows it very well. Sure. But it's like a city back there mm -hmm. with like literally displays that were stolen from, you know, uh, uh, from the trashes of, of, of Target and stuff. So yeah. how, how often do you clean that? Have you ever gotten it clean? And, um, or do you avoid that area? Because when we went there, it wasn't a safe place to, to visit. Sure. So um, we have gotten, Mass Park has certainly been clean in the past, but I think one big limitation for our organization is that we never clean up an active encampment. We've just drawn a hard line that if it's active, we don't want to risk taking anybody's stuff. We don't want to do any of that. Okay. So we will only plan the cleanups once those encampments have become inactive. And that might be because of enforcement. It might be because people have just organically moved on. Sometimes it's because of a flood or a fire. Um, but we are moving around that area a lot based on what is not active at the time. And I will say our, we have a great rapport with the folks that live in the riverbed and I, I feel very safe sending our volunteers and our teams out because of that rapport. We work very closely with homeless outreach, um, especially the path outreach worker that the city hired um, or fund, the position that the city funded. We work with those teams weekly to make sure that we're kind of coordinating and if they lose track of somebody that they're trying to get placed into housing. We've actually had a couple, at least one occasion I can think of, of somebody 
who was in Mast West who had a housing match, but their case manager couldn't find them. And we happened to know where they were. So sometimes we have those organic partnerships that can help them be a little bit more successful. Um, I will say that is an area we are planning to target during that cleanup in November with a large group of volunteers, including some folks from uh, Recycle for Veterans, a military group. So um, we'll be out there and hope to really buckle down on so, that. So with our new, because we have new city city ordinances on, on camping in the next to water or whatever the way we mm -hmm. uh, uh, post it. M if we if that wasn't an active encampment, then we can go in there and actually do a real cleanup because I mean it it there's a city back there. Yeah. yeah. And and that's where, you know, half of our fires were, you know, a year and a half ago, or just every other week there was fires back there. Um so that I was curious about that one because that one's a bad one. I mean that most yeah. most folks don't know um how bad it is because I don't see any of you walking back there. <laughs> and if you want to walk back there, I I will offer it to you. I'll go back there, but it's it's a it's a kind of a scary place. But um, that's one of the the biggest places where you know it, I would love to see cleaned up, and um, and uh, I see your that your website has these large cleanups. I would love for uh, us to be able to get the word out to have folks be a part of of the uh, the. Um, the green team, because yeah. the green team is the everybody can do it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not not so much the river rescue team. Um, but do you take new volunteers on the river, river ref, rescue team? I mean, yes, folks both, that want to be involved a little totally, bit more. Totally, totally. Both teams are accepting volunteers, and the the clean and green is a very low bar to entry. People can just show up, and we will have a trained leader to guide them and give them their orientation. River rescue, we have a little bit more of a vetting process where we just try to make sure that it's a good fit for the person, like for what they're looking for, just because it is, I mean, as you saw, they removed something like 30,000 pounds of trash. That's probably 20 people. It's a lot of trash that they're hauling every time. So we want to make sure it's a good fit um, for the volunteer, but um, we welcome new people all the time. Okay. And and that's probably on your website to get it is. those volunteers. Actually the um the cleanup the big clean and green ones are also on the city's website. So we've got those on uh Bree has helped us get those onto the city website as well. I'd love to see a, a push out to our social media and all that. I, I know folks like to get out there and we're coming up on uh you know, the months that it's gonna rain and move all that trash to the ocean. So totally. if we can get it get it done. I think your program's amazing and um uh, and then the next question is, have we ever donated to this? Has Spark ever made a donation to the River, um, River Park Foundation? Okay. Cool. I, and I think I might want to bring that up at a, at a future me uh, meeting if, I, if there's any folks that are interested in that. I would like to make that an item because um, I think that's a worthy cause for us specifically. So um, if we get enough interest... We'll bring that up as a, an agenda item, then we can talk about it more officially. Thank you so but much. But thank you for being yeah. here. Uh, let's start off with Linda. Do you have anything to say down there? Okay. Well, I, I, <laughs> this is a big issue for me just because I'm very active in MAST and in town center, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little crazy out there sometimes. Kathleen, do you have anything? Cindy, do you have anything else? Dan. I, Anyone? Uh, what What are oh. we doing about the homeless encampment? Is that this might be beyond the, our repertoire? But what is there? The so, city of Santee actively trying to get rid of this encampment? Yes. Or are we like trying to? Spark isn't doing anything, but the city did yeah, uh, make some new um, uh, municipal codes. I think are they municipal codes? Am I speaking? Uh, and do you know are they municipal codes or are they? Yeah. Or and Nick, one one of you can speak to it. I know that some were passed very recently that are directly related to people camping. And making fires in and, Mass and the police have the resources to to execute what they need. Yeah, to I don't know about execute. that, but <laughs> we have rules now in place. We didn't before. Do you have any? Uh, you got it right. Oh, I have a question. I. Yes, sir. No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, hypothetically, let's say we have a student who might need some community service for one reason or another. Sure. Can we send them to you? Absolutely. Yeah, we do community service hours for both of the programs I just described. Thank yeah. You. And um, I will say, you can see on this, um, this data that I pulled up briefly that the enforcement of the ordinance, the fire ordinance, started about the same time that, that yeah. you started. I, saw that, I saw that yeah. uh, on, on your part. Yeah. And, and it's great. I mean, it's great that we actually have something in the books. It's just, uh, and I know our local sheriffs want to be participate in this yeah. to, to, to home these folks, but um, we've had a lot of issues in Mass Park, Mass Park mm -hmm. West. Um, and it's scary for the people that live along there. I mean, 
one of these days, if we get a, I mean, you, you all see what happened to Maui, you get a fire with some wrong wind and you're in trouble. Yeah. And, um, and that's why I'm glad that we have some, some actual laws on the books now. And uh, we had some lighter laws on the books before, but it didn't seem to go very far. But now that there's some, some better, better laws. So hopefully we can get some enforcement and at least move them out of the, the riverbed. And I think on that note, the other real value of this data is that we took all of our data on encampments and the census data, where we actually enumerate the individuals living along the riverbed, um, to the county, and they used that to, uh, in part, to get the $17 million grant that the county just received recently from the state. And that would that's going to bring additional resources um, in the form of outreach workers and housing assistance so they can help give people pathways out of the riverbed. Um, rather than just, you know, whatever shelter beds might be available. So it's, it's both sides, you know. And we might be able to use some money for the uh, bulldozers that are going to need it for <laughs> the uh, uh, Mass Park West uh, encampment. <laughs> Stephanie, you have anything? Well, great. Anything else? No, I think welcome. Thank I, you if so anybody's much. ever wanted to go out in the riverbed, just give us a shout. We always welcome the opportunity to do some tours. Great presentation. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I need to awesome. To end this? And thank you for having her here. Okay, let's move on to uh, staff reports. We'll start with Nick. He has a PowerPoint. Yeah, I have a brief, thank you, sir, appreciate it. I have a brief uh, PowerPoint that I wanna share with the group. Uh, I just wanna start off by saying that, uh, you know, I wake up every morning and I tell myself I have such an amazing team. I have a great rec division and I have an amazing public works division. And right now I'm gonna shed a little bit of some love to the public services division. Um, they did such an amazing job refurbishing all of our kiosks in our community. I would say all of them. Some of them were relatively pretty deteriorated, old, haven't been touched in years, haven't been painted in years, haven't been looked at in years. So um, I tasked Sam and the team to essentially go out to our kiosks and just give them a little bit of love. And what they came back with, I was just absolutely surprised and amazed. And I just want to give a moment to just recognize the amazing work that Sam's team does predominantly speaking, Dan and Chris. So with that said, I just want to share this with the community and also with my esteemed colleagues here. Uh, Margie, do you mind starting the PowerPoint if possible? So here we have um, <coughs> Mass Park West. There you go, Mass <laughs> We're Park just West. talking about Mass Park West. We have something uh, that's old. We have it tagged up. We have it abused. Um, it, it's old. Um, next slide, please. The gentlemen were able to fix it, and it looks like this now. So it looks brand new. Um, keep in mind that uh, we essentially just got parts, we got paint, we got a little bit of sweat equity, and this is what we came up with. We didn't have to spend any new infrastructure on this. We did it all in-house, and we were able to spend minimal money on this. Next slide, Margie. Here we have one at Town Center Community Park West. It's, it's not in the worst shape, but look, it needs a little bit of love. Next slide. It looks much better now. You know, it's something we could actually be proud of here in our community. Next slide. Shadow Hill Park. This one definitely looks like it needs a little bit of love. <laughs> and it's essentially brand new to some degree. Next slide. Walker Trails. Um, you know, th this one is a little bit questionable. Uh, I, I don't know what kind of debris we have there. There it looks like we have some cinder blocks there, what appear to be cinder blocks, but they're not. Next slide. I mean, that just looks amazing, guys. I mean, I can't. It's only speak volumes. Next slide. Okay, so I, I don't know what happened here. Maybe Chris and Dan got a little excited before we did some refurbishments, but uh, I'd be curious to know, Sam, what would happen here? <laughs> you don't have to answer it. <laughs> so it, it looked like that pretty much. Uh, I did walk the trail, and um, I could account for all those little pieces there before the work took place. Next slide. I mean, that just looks amazing right there. Next slide. I believe we have one of our last ones here, and I believe some of you guys may um, go visit Dog Park from time to time. And um, next slide. It just looks great. That paint job just looks amazing. Next slide. Here's just a re repertoire of what we've done, and next slide. And essentially, we utilize these to essentially put our own information. You know, For example, we have information about Shallow Hill Park. We talk about our community events. We talk about our senior program. We talk about our amazing uh, esteemed senior community. We talk about our rec classes. We talk about all of our special events. We talk about some important city news, like the Arts and Entertainment District, which is an amazing uh, program that the city's working on. We talk about the My Santee app, the Active Project List, and so on. 
So um, in wrapping it up, Margie, I don't think we have another slide, correct? So I just essentially wanted to give kudos to the Public Services Division for doing such an amazing job. Um, you know, of course, uh, they didn't go out and buy uh, new infrastructure. This is all done with sweat equity, paint, and just the drive to make this community better. So thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Very nice. Thanks, and, Sam. Yes. And um, also, you know, you got to keep in mind, uh, they ha the information has to go on these kiosks. So, and that's where Ken comes in and does such an amazing job and works with our marketing team to make sure that these kiosks have all the information to make sure our community is educated. So thank you, Anna. I appreciate that. All right, so I just want to have a few more things to talk about. We do have a community cleanup coming up, a community cleanup and shred event. It's on Saturday, September 16. Uh, it's from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Just a few facts about this. I, I will read this information for the community. Um, City of Santee residents may drop off unwanted items such as appliances, mattresses, furniture, and tree limbs. This is for household waste only. Be prepared to show proof of residency like a driver's license or a gas or electric bill. Uh, each household will be allowed up to four items of disposal. Shredding is limited to five boxes per household. Also keep in mind no hazardous materials, no construction materials, and uh, please don't bring any vehicles. That is gonna be really difficult for us to dispose the day of. <laughs> with that said, I also wanna share with everyone here, um, I, I know it's no surprise, uh, maybe some constituents have reached out to you in some specific manner, or maybe you have been approached by an AYSO group or perhaps my NFL has talked to you, but right now our synthetic fields, they could use a little bit of love. So with that said, we're getting together with REC staff and our senior management analyst, and we're gonna put a grant proposition together to Joe Anderson's office to get some refurbishments done for the football synthetic field at Town Center and Community Park West. With that said, um, the cost of the project is gonna be a little under $500,000. My NFL has graciously um, put forth about $50,000 towards the renovation. Uh, we're going to be asking AYSO and other uh, groups to see if they want to contribute to make the grant application a little bit more um, palatable for Joel Anderson's office. With that said, um, I do also want to mention that our recreation division is taking on an amazing step, and we are discovering to see if this might be a potential fit for the community. So everyone's familiar with the concept of an active transportation plan, a general plan, a parks master plan, a trails plan, but have you ever heard of an aging friendly action plan. I believe not a lot of people have. The city of La Mesa has one, the city of San Diego has one, National City is working on one, and there's other communities here in the San Diego County that are working on one. But that said, this is a, an age friendly action plan and it's essentially a plan that focuses on our senior population and how they could better assimilate in our community. So this is something that we're gonna pitch to our community at some point. We're gonna talk to the city manager's office about this. It is going to need council approval for us to initiate the process. So um, please stand by, we're gonna provide more updates as time goes on. But that said, um, I think that wraps it up. I do wanna add one more point on our last agenda. We did mention that we were gonna talk about a reserve policy today. Um, after further discussion with our executive team, we decided to pull this item because um, this, um, the community enhancement fund, we have about $210,000 in that community enhancement fund. Uh, we're noticing that we want to essentially do more in our parks and we want to utilize this money more effectively. And that's only good news to our residents. We want to use this money to better our parks. And an amazing thing that council did a few meetings ago was allocate $50,000 from that community enhancement fund to benefit Big Rock Park. The goal is, you know, who knows, maybe next year we might focus on Shadow Hill. Maybe the following year we may focus on Town Center. Maybe the following year we might focus on another park. So the goal is, we don't want to restrict the way we use these funds, but at the same time, please be mindful that we're uh, amazing fiduciary agents. We're not going to make sure, we're not going to go, uh, we're not going to dry the, the community has been fund dry. We're going to make sure that we have enough money to give to the seniors, to give to the teens, to give to the VIP program, and to give to the community. Like, like this fine gentleman just said, we might want to give a few thousand dollars to the River Park Foundation. We might want to buy a new AD for uh, AYSO. We are keeping account of those expenditures, and we just want to make sure that this esteemed group and the community knows that this was something that we talked about very diligently, and we just feel like we want to essentially try to manage our money a little bit more effectively. So with that said, we may talk about the reserve policy <clears throat> at the future hour, but as of right now, we're not going to. That's about it, guys. Awesome. I, I have actually a question on two of those items that you just talked about. Go right ahead, sir. Um, the cleanup, um, just because I, most folks aren't clear on this because it says household items. Can you drop off a refrigerator? Is that a household item? Yes. Okay. 
can you drop off an old LCD TV? Yes. Okay. Cool. Because uh, when it, when it says community cleanup and paper shred event, it it um it it's it those those items that you know they won't take at our dump. I have a dorm fridge for my daughter when she grew, you know finished college, and it sits on the side of my house still because at the dump they want sixty dollars with your free pass. They want sixty dollars to take the fridge or at the recycling place. So I just wanted I was I wanted to clarify that because I've never actually partaked in one of these uh, um, events, but. I will this time. Uh, second one is the um, when we get further along on the grant that we're looking, and and I, I'd love to to see Joel uh, um, or, or the or the, the um, uh, San Diego uh, give money for our fields. But is there an opportunity f for Spark to throw some money in the hat to make it look uh, look a little bit more um, uh, you know lucrative for for others to join in? Because those fields, I mean, I was a coach for sixteen years there. Well, 10 of them were there because that's, that's when they were built. But they are getting beat up, and they need to be replaced. And if, if we need to throw in a couple dollars from Spark, that might be an option to help, you know, see, have other folks want to throw in some money as well. So, let's, yeah, so it, 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 keep that in mind, and I, I think that would be something. Because that's directly, that's one of our highest used park in town, and um, it's one of our nicest facilities for youth sports. So if we can help there, I mean, that's a big chunk of, of what we do. So... I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, sir. So, anything else, Nick? No? Ann, show us what you got. I have a special guest from the back door. Oh, special guest yeah. from the back door. Yeah. Grand entrance? Look. Hey. hey. Becky. Are you doing video first? Oh, we're doing it. Well, come on out. Oh, geez. You've got to do a video. Then we have a special guest. <laughs> so, she's the we'll a show a video first, though. She's um, the AV person and the special guest? Yeah, we're mold we do everything. Um, course. So um, we have a video first from Santee TV. Blame Margie. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm you. Who knows? This laptop. Okay, so most of you guys were there, so we had a great time at the summer concerts, and uh, that was a recap. If you want to see the whole thing in entirety, that just teaches you to go on to Santi TV. You can find that through our website or on uh, cable. Oh, there it is again. There you go. There's the whole thing. So that's what we did this summer. Um, a little bit of what we did this summer, San Martin summer concerts. So um, just shows you how much fun the community has out there and how much they actually really attend. We anticipate that we have between two to 3,000 people there each Thursday night. And now is my special guest, Be Becky Lowndes, special events supervisor. Hello, everybody. No need to all applaud at once. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. I'm Becky Lowndes, Special Event Supervisor, Community Services. I wanted to give you a quick Bruise and Bites update. We are about six weeks away already. I feel like we just blinked and 10 weeks of summer went by, and we're already preparing our fall and winter calendars. So I wanted to give you an update um, after the presentation that um, Ann made a couple weeks ago. So our current vendor count right now is a total of 37. 
We have 17 food vendors out of our ideal goal of 30, 11 beverage vendors with our goal being 25, and nine business vendors with our goal being 10. Um, so we've seen a significant uptake in our vendor recruitment, so I appreciate all the help. Our current ticket sales, we have sold 514 general admission out of the 1,200 that are currently released, 18 designated driver out of 100, and then five, the reserved tables out of 16. So you can see we're still a little bit under where we could be. We're hoping that in this last little bit, a lot of media and marketing push, we can get some um, extra ticket sales go going on. So uh, we do appreciate any support from you reaching out to friends, families, neighbors, communities outside of CNT. We want to show them how awesome we are and how awesome our events are. So we want to welcome them into our city and show them why we're the best city in East County and all of San Diego County. So appreciate your help with that. And then I also wanted to put, you, put on your radar, in the next couple of weeks we'll be putting a recruitment for volunteers. So we have several tasks that we need help with, especially the day before, which is going to be a lot of manual labor. That is the sweaty day of us lifting, pulling, twisting, bending, carrying. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, if you like to sweat with us outside on a Friday, October 20th, uh, we would appreciate your help. Otherwise, we do have needs on the day of the event. We have various roles such as uh, checking in, uh, checking wristbands, uh, opportunity drawing, uh, somebody do a breaking and rotating for other volunteers and staff, food and beverage uh, dis distributors for some of our vendors who are requesting volunteers, and then clean up as well. So we're going to be sending it out in the next couple of weeks. We will give Spark the first opportunity to sign up for volunteer shifts before we put it out to the public. So we usually will give you anywhere from three to five days um, a heads up if you'd like to volunteer. Are there any questions so far about Bruising Bites? Um, yeah, I have a question. Uh, how much before the Bruising Bites, I know in the past we've done some actual media hits, like with KUSI or one of the local stations, do you have any of those planned, or have you reached out to any of those folks, and how much before the event do we do those? Because I know they usually like to keep it the week of, but we want to sell stuff now. Right. So we actually have on 101 KGB at the end of this month, last week of September, the week of September 25th through 29th, I want to say, um, we have gifted 10 tickets to them um, in exchange for on-air promotion. They're going to be giving away two tickets every morning from the 6 to 10 a.m. morning show. Um, and just give, we give them a little blur about what we are, so hoping that can target our demographic of East County, people who like to have community events and enjoy beverages and food. So that's a good one for us as well. We're in the works with, uh, I want to say CBS 8, to have an, uh, we're going to try to host like a mini live Bruise and Bites, have the band come on site and a couple food and beverage vendors and have a couple like gift baskets and stuff just to do a, a mini preview of what the event could look like. And then, yeah, you're right, usually about the week before is when they want to do their final push. But we do have marketing uh, sending out news releases to all of our local contacts for that. All right, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes, Linda. Yes, I do. Um, I noticed that Lakeside is having their rhythm and brews. And I noticed the price when I looked at it was $25. And it had children. So I'm wondering, how do they have booze and bites? You know, but their rhythm and brews, and they're having, like, four bands playing and you know their advertising was off the chain i gotta say that it was catchy and i'm wondering is there any way that we can up our ante to you know have you know it more open to children or you know i mean i don't understand how lakeside gets their their uh fundraiser with children and 25 dollars a ticket 4.30 to 10 o'clock at night, you know, or, or it's 11, I think, maybe even, because they have all these bands playing. So I, um, I'm gonna, I'll make a comment on that. You have yeah. to pay for your beer there. Oh. That's a big difference. I, I'm all in for the uh, one price, y'all, you can drink. That's just me. But um, uh, so, yeah, I, I was asked to participate in, in that event. Um, and it's a cool event. It's just a different event, um, I think, fundamentally than what, uh, you know, Brews and Bites is and has been forever. It's to leave your kids at home, <laughs> um, in my opinion. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, I do. they did do a decent media push. I mean, I've Ooh. seen it everywhere, like social media, <coughs> um, on, on just about every platform that I'm on, and I'm on all the old, older ones, you know. 
Facebook and Instagram. But um, but yeah, I do know that they they're charging their the beers are twenty five dollars. Well, they're, and they're also charging four beers. So you have to, if you get a beer, you're paying eight bucks or seven bucks or whatever. Yeah, you but. Know. Turns into $75, right? Yeah, that's that's see ours. You get all you can eat and all you could drink for X amount of hours. I I understand. I just I um I think that their event and our event are mutually exclusive and they're both going to be awesome because I support all of East County. Uh, mm-hmm. I just think uh, I think we'll be fine. I we always sell out. We're going to sell out. We, we need some more vendors, and I think people are still coming off the the. The hangover from COVID. I mean, there's still uh, being a small business owner. It's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult right now. And um, so, but I, I think as long as we all keep pushing, I, I've reached out to all of my folks in La Mesa. I just did a great event in La Mesa. It's the Wine and Food Festival up on top of Mount Helix, and that was an awesome event. It's very similar to ours. And uh, the organizers up there, I said, you need to come buy tickets to ours because you know we all support everyone. And uh, theirs is very cool. It's just logistically terrible <laughs> you know, because you have to get up on the hill. But um, so I think if we just keep pushing, I think we should be uh, good, Linda. But I, I understand what you're saying because I saw that too. I saw the $25 multiple bands, but it's just a different event. Yeah, I just feel that the price range is so high. You know, for this day and age of how people are spending money, you know, they're, they, there's not the resources that we had before COVID. And now some of these people are really hurting, so it's kind of, kind of hurts us. And so, I was just seeing if there's any way to structure this, you know, to so more people could participate. But I, I understand. I have to, yes, uh, I the Stephanie. I think it's two different, all different fundraising events and what they go to. Yeah, where ours is. Uh, geared to the seniors and the youth and that I think the rodeo is probably more for El Cap and that I don't even camp. think it's a non-profit to be honest with you uh they're the group that's putting that on I think it's a isn't for- that the Lakeside Historical Society oh, that's well, putting they might that have on? thrown a I would have done the same thing you attach a non-profit <laughs> to it but um uh yeah. but yeah no it's, I think they're different though Linda I really do and uh, I'm gonna go to that one as well and we'll see We'll take notes. I mean, that's why when I went to the, the, the La Mesa one, I'm like, hey, this looks just like ours. What is it? And it's pretty much the same thing as ours, just in a location that's very hard to get to. Yeah. So I, and it was packed. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried. I'm, but I think with all of our help, and we are active members, with all of our help, uh, Stephanie, you and I, putting things in windows, that kind of stuff, that is the stuff that we need to get out there and, and just do and be, be an active Spark member. Get, out, get the word out there when you're out. You all go to everywhere in Santee like we all do. Hey, say, hey, our thing's coming up next month. Make sure you get your tickets. Or if it's a business, you know, if it's one of the businesses that want to participate, it doesn't have to be a food and wine beverage or a business. It could be in any business, and they can come do, you know. So I, I think we'll be good, though. Yeah, I, I boosted it out on Facebook to uh... – I think the first 20 vendors that scheduled under me, I would do a photo shoot to help them with their business. Oh, nice. So um, I hope Thank you. That's wonderful. we'll get some traction on that. Cool. Anyone else? Any other comments? Yes. Is there a fee for a restaurant to participate? Can you remind me if no, it is in fact, free. We give them a stipend? correct. We we provide a stipend to our our food vendors only three hundred dollars, um, and there's no fee or um, admission fee for beverage vendors or um, private commercial vendors. They just, they just have to offer enough food for as many people. Correct. As they have to provide a, a food or beverage. Sample. And that's why we set a cap on tickets so we can expect a certain amount of people. Yeah, I mean, and and I and being a vendor, I'm also uh, just full disclosure. I'm a vendor this year. I'll have my little thing out there. I was out there last year. It was fun. Um, and, and the process, I just want to say the process this year is phenomenal. Whatever that system you're using should be the system you use for everything going forward. It's all online. If you could do it on your phone, you could sign it. You could do everything you need to do on your phone or on a computer. And it's way different than before when you used to have to print out something and scan it and send it in. So the, as far as being the end user, being, having eyes on this side, it's super easy. And uh, so I don't know what we're paying for that system, um, but uh, it's definitely good for, we're out there asking for folks for free stuff already. So to make it the easiest way possible for them. 
So um, if, if any of you go out there and talk to any of your restaurants, your local East County restaurants, and you like them, say, hey, go to this website. And then they just click a button, go through a couple steps, fill out some stuff, and it's, and it's real easy. I appreciate so. the feedback, Dean. Is there anywhere to find out what restaurants have already signed up? Is there, is there, is we there? are updating our website. Um, social media posts are as well. Um, if you Usually as they're coming online, we submit it to marketing and they put it on the website. And we usually hyperlink to their website as well. You have to read. Cool. Thank um, you. No problem. And then um, just while I'm here, I, we left a wonderful uh, eight and a half by 11 on everybody's counter that goes over the rest of the special events that are happening in this calendar year. Nick already mentioned the community cleanup that's happening on September 16th, so if you got junk, bring it then, please. Arrive early, the line does get really long. We also have our first ever Movies in the Park coming up September 30th, the town center. It will be Coco. We have our pre-show entertainment starting at 4 p.m., and the movie will start at dusk. Sunset's around 6.45, so probably the 6.30, 6.45 is when the, the screening will go on. It's about, I want to say, a 90-minute movie, um, some of the pre-show entertainment that we have is we have SD Nice from the County of San Diego is coming out providing entertainment. Rise City Church is bringing two inflatables. We have a youth dance performance from East County, a ballet folklorico is going to come. We have a DJ. We have a face painting, some wonderful sugar skulls. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have some food trucks. So please bring family, friends, kids. It's going to be a great event. And this is the first year we're doing this, correct? Correct. The Lakes used to do a, a Yes, movie. I remember the... Um, I have to be honest, and of course I've been out of, out, of, out of the state for a while, I haven't seen a single thing on this. Okay. This is the first I, I remember talking to you guys about this back when it was a concept, but um, if the first one is, sorry, I don't have my glasses. Well, we only have one. We're the pro- 30th. Oh, you're only doing one. Yes, okay. correct. Just one. So we have, we have a, uh, 22 days to promote it, but, and this is going to be on the stage at, at Town Center East? Correct. So if you went to Santee Salutes, we had that big LED screen. So the inflatable movie screen will be exactly where that screen are, is going to be, and we'll have the dance performance and DJs on the stage, so cool. facing the same direction. So we do have corner banners over on um, right off the 52 and Mast, and then off of the 52 and Magnolia. We have uh, three by five banners in the parks. We're doing social media push. It is a new event, so I'm hoping that um, more people will hear about it. We have things going on, Peach Jar, and we're just spreading our um, our little wings as much as we can to get it out to the community. Oh, are we going to have some food vendors there? Yes. All right, cool. I, I saw coming over here that Santana had it in their market. It oh, here. wonderful. Nice. Yes. So. Yeah. Oh, okay, oh. and then I'm, any questions about moving the park? No, thank oh. you. Okay, um, and then what's not on here is we're going to have another blood drive on the week of Halloween. So if you and your ghouls and goblins and zombie and vampire friends want to donate some blood, it'll be on Monday, October 30th. Um, it, we do have a reservation needs to be is required. So if you go to um, redcross.org and type in City of CNT, you'll be able to make your appointment. So it's from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. here in City Hall, Building 8A, um, on Monday, October 30th. And then the following day, our marketing team is hosting a trick-or-treat snap-a-photo. So they'll have a little selfie station up here in City Hall for the kids dressed in their costumes, pick up some candy, take a photo with the parents. It's really cute. So even if you don't like to dress up, if you can stop by and say hi, it'd be wonderful. And then finally, closing out the year, we have our highly anticipated holiday lighting ceremony and celebration. will be on Friday, November 17th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. in Santee Trolley Square. This year, we're going to try to do something a little bit different, and we're creating a Selfies with Santa the following evening, Saturday, November 18th, from 4.30 to 7.30, in the same exact place on the stage. Just an opportunity for parents who don't want to wait in the really long line to see Santa the night before. Also, maybe if you're a little overstimulated, it is loud, crazy. Um, it is a nice time for you to have a kind of a special meet and greet with Santa. It is free. We just won't have a professional photographer there. We will have staff to take your photo, but it is a nice opportunity to have your kids meet Santa and not have to spend all night in line. So uh, we could use some support getting this out as well. It is something new and different, um, but we just want to provide that extra opportunity for the kids in the community. And that's all I have. Any questions for me? Anyone have? I, I have one question. Sure. Sorry. I know everyone else to go. Um, I know some of the feedback from last year was specifically related to your selfie stations at this event in general, because you, you normally have like a little area. You have a, you had a couple areas that were pretty besides the um, Santa, so where you can stand in front. And there was some lighting and some other folks. 
Do we have that uh, kind of? Do we ha do you still have those stations around? Yes. Because I mean, the Santa line is ridiculous. Exactly, and that's what we're hoping that we'll, we'll be passing out even to during the event. We'll be passing out little flyers to the people in line saying, "Hey, if you don't want to wait in this line, come back tomorrow um, between these hours, and you can come see Santa again." But we do have different characters and different, um, different things to take. Setups, cool. Yeah. Take awesome. Them. Thank you. Looking forward to it. And that's it. Okay. Video. Okay, Anne. Margie's got it right. All right, so that's our commercial that's out for um, Brews and Bites. Uh, Becky covered a lot, but I have a little, a few things. Um, our summer camp program did conclude on August 22nd, and our teen center opened for year, uh, after school operations on August 23rd. Um, our fall brochure should be on your pile of stuff there. Registration's currently out. Um, register now. <clears throat> um, our teen center is taking off pretty fast and furious here at the beginning of the school year. We um, have approximately 25 uh, teens a day at that program. Seniors have also been very busy. Um, they participated in um, something kind of new. It's called our Summer Senior Buddy Walk Challenge. Instead of having us meet them for every type of walk every week, we actually challenged them to go out with friends or family and complete 20 um, walks throughout the summer. And we actually had about 20 participants who did that. Some even made like a scrapbook. So um, they got a medal. And you'd say, oh, seniors don't want a medal. They like medals. They like show their grandchildren. or like, look, I got a medal. Did you get a medal, Cindy? Okay, I just have to say, yeah, I did it. Um, I can't believe it's only 20 people, though. But Well, they're still turning them in, so. But, yeah, we got a really cool medal and a little thing to go around our cool. necks to keep us cool. Cooling you're not, you're not a, yeah. you're not a awesome. senior, Cindy. What are you you're trying to? <clears throat> I just barely am a senior. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> so the but cooling. good job. That's, that sounds awesome. Yeah, so... Um, uh, it was really successful because you never know what the weather is, right? Or even if you're out of town, if you want to walk somewhere else, or if you're like, hey, I'll only walk on the beach in the summer. Um, also, we continue our partnerships with our senior program, our library partnership. We did offer, and we will offer the first Wednesday. Um, this last September, this last week, we had the Kumeyaay History and Culture um, presentation. And then we still have a free Feeling Fit Club. It's a county partnership. It's free for seniors every Tuesday and Thursday. You can come here at 1030, get a free exercise class. Um, community outreach, we are going to actually the Highlands Mobile Home Park on September 26th and providing an activity with them as well. Trying to get to one mobile home park a month. Also, we have some upcoming trips to the Queen Mary in Long Beach. And then also in November, we're going to be going on a SEAL tour, which is a, a boat. And also, it's also a tour bus. So it does a variety of different things. Parks and fields are very busy. Fall sports have begun. That includes football, cheer, soccer. Um, and we have an upcoming youth sports meeting on October 5th at 530, which is the, right before the Spark meeting next month. Big Rock, Big Rock Pickleball Banner is still ongoing. We have about three or four interested parties so far for a banner, um, for posting a banner up at the Big Rock Pickleball Courts, which is a fundraising effort. And the staff is um, currently working with the community, Santee Community Foundation um, to kind of reactivate their board members and establish their website and, and make it easier to be able to make donations. Um, we have a meeting tentatively scheduled in November. Now the foundation... Um, Sandy Community Foundation is not affiliated with Spark. It is actually an independent 501c3, and they um, are not affiliated with the city, but their donations that they do um, provide do benefit the city parks and recreation program in our division. Um, anybody have any questions? Anyone questions? Nope. Nope. SantiRec.com, you can find everything you'd want to know and more. Thank you, Ann. All right. Sam, it's, it's your time to shine. Okay. 
Good evening, Spark members. I would like to um, start off with a huge, huge thank you to Sarah in the River Park Foundation. She's very humble um, with what she says and does. Very modest. Uh, special shout out to Rachel on her team. So when they say they collected 21 tons of trash, I want you to think about what that is. And, and it's trash bags full of trash. So it's thousands of trash bags. It's hundreds of truckloads of trash that their volunteers get. And when they do that, that freezes up, frees my guys up to do things like kiosk repairs. So with their help, um, they make the river look great. And I have nothing but appreciation for, for Sarah and Rachel and her team. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, one of our colleagues uh, retired, Tony Hurst, 27 years with the Park and Landscape uh, mm -hmm. on our team. He's going to be very missed. Um, we have some vacancies coming up. If you know anybody interested, pass the word out, uh, drop some applications, look at the Santee's website. Um, last thing is the tropical storm that that, that kind of hit us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it was much ado about nothing <laughs> to some people, but to some people it was a big deal. Um, in Santee, we handed out, um, it was self-serve. It was probably close to 4,000 sandbags where people Jeez. made sandbags and put them in their cars and vehicles. And um, we had really no damage. There was a handful of tree branches and one private tree that went down. So your city did well in that tropical storm. So with that, open to questions. Any questions? Ah, thank you, Sam. Hang on. Oh, shoot. Oh, Miss so, Andy. The trees that we planted in Wood Glen Vista, was it 22 March, Arbor Day? I believe so. Or, um, yeah. Do you have a, I mean, I look and most of them look to be doing okay, but some of them don't. Do you have a, I don't know, a live and die? There's a handful of trees that didn't make it. So every mass planting like that, you could expect to lose five, ten percent, depending on how many plants you plant. And we did lose a couple trees. Um, they will be replaced. Did um, we lose as many as five or ten percent? I mean, out of what we planted, I think we planted sixty-three. We. I, I don't know. I'd have to count. If we lost six, that would be 10%. So we might have lost a couple more than six. It's a tough one when you have volunteers. No, I realize that. I did realize did that. yours that. die, Cindy? Yeah. Did, did yours die, the one no, you plant? No, mine did not die, but uh -huh. mine, the one next to it died. Mine is good. And so, no, because I just go up there and I go talk to all the trees. And, That's nice. And they've been doing well, but then I missed. I didn't go see them very much this summer. And so I was just up there, and I'm like, oh, they're not looking so good. I need to ask Sam how, what our ratio is. So overall, we did as expected? As expected, yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, question for you. Uh, are we still, just, do you still have stock tree, trees in stock for, I forgot what you called it, the curb? Park. 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 Do you still have that? Do you still have we, any we of those? We don't keep trees in stock. Oh, okay. Our... our Tree contractor has a nursery that they purchase from, but we have trees. If you have a parkway and you want a free tree, just hit us up and we will. Because it's been about 16 months since I told you I wanted one. I just never called you. You've never or set followed up anything. through. <laughs> but I still water it every day. And I'm like, you know, we should, we should have a nice tree here. So um, at some point, I just wanted to know, because that's, that's a cool thing for folks that have houses and parkways that just have watered grass, which is mine. So. At some point, I'll get a hold yeah, of Yeah, reach out to us. We would love to plant a tree for free, and we will trim and maintain it for the lifetime of the tree, if oh. it's the parkway. Yes. You bet. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. All right. My Indeed. pleasure. Thank you. Great. Let's go to number six, community reports, general announcements, handouts. That is you, Spark members. We'll start down there. Linda, do you have any uh, announcements, handouts, or thoughts, general ones? Kathleen? Nope. <laughs> Cindy. Nope. I'm good. Dan, you always have well, something. Of course, I've got something, and uh, you know, I, I really want to thank the uh, this, the city and, and Sam and his crew. Uh, we're 
uh, with the uh, Kiwanis Club of Santee is partnering with the Rotary is Santee Lakeside Rotary, and uh, we are going to go out um, for celebrate com the community on September 16th, Woodland Vista Park, and we're going to plant a monarch butterfly way station. And uh, so, uh, you know, Sam and his crew, or, or I should say Eric King and his crew, who works for Sam, uh, Eric and his crew are out preparing the soil, and uh, we're going to go out there and plant some uh, some plants. Uh, so uh, come on out. Uh, after, you've, after you've dropped your stuff off over at City Hall for the uh, trash, trash cleanup, then swing on by Woodland Vista and uh, join us out there. Um, Beyond that, I don't know. Uh, I can't be the only one that was that was interviewed uh, this week by uh, Ten News. Um, but uh, Ten News uh, Friday night. Uh, I don't have a time. They are going to be uh, spotlighting City of Santee and the wonderful things we do in the City of Santee. Uh, so I was interviewed on Tuesday for that. You know, I forgot to ask them who else they were interviewing, but I can't imagine I was the only one uh, to to speak. Uh, I spoke on behalf of Kiwanis. Oh, just messing, just messing with you. What's that? I said I hope not. Yeah, I hope not too. <laughs> Nick, can you make sure you get on that agenda? Can you reach out to Channel Ten? <laughs> um, so uh, that's happening, um, and then uh, of course the Kiwanis uh, clubs. Uh, 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 all across uh, San Diego County are going to be doing the Miracle Mile of Quarters at Grossmont Center on October 28th from 10 to 2. Uh, so come on out and uh, watch the, the key clubbers uh, make uh, art out of quarters, and it's all for Rady's Children's Hospital. And that's all I got. Cool. Thank you, Dan. Okay. I, um, I have a couple oh. questions. Yes. Um, when we have that, we have our, our money, the Sparks money is held by the city. Is that correct? The 210000 that we have? Yes, it's, it's in an account. Now, does that accumulate interest right now? Is it, is there, does the city have it in any kind of like interest-bearing accounts? Okay, because like at the current rate, it would be making $743 a month off the, off the money that we have. Um, it seems like we could do a lot with that money. That's just like a basic savings account. Um, so I was wondering, was there anything that we can do in order to get that invested? We could talk to our finance team to see if that's something that's Sorry. We could talk to our finance team to see if that's something that they want to pallet. Um, I could definitely talk to you, talk to the finance team, and I could get back to you and kind of get some resolution on that. Okay. Yeah, that would, I mean, I, we had found some nice returns on, on some stuff with the business with some cash that we were holding for, for future purchases. And we were surprised at the returns, you know, you, you see like a 4% interest rate. You don't think about it until you get an amount of money, like 200 plus right. K and it becomes a substantial amount of money. Right, yeah. That's up. So, um, the other question I had was um, the entrance to Santee at Mast Boulevard, um, the landscaping there, Sam, is that, like where the signs are when we had, um, you know, upcoming events and all that, is that maintained by the city? Is that like, like right where the entrance to Mast, you know, city of Santee and that small structure where we put up the banners and everything, is that like, do we have any plans for anything more in that area? <coughs> Am I getting on the Sorry, put you on the spot plastic. here. It's on, <laughs> it's on uh, West Hills Parkway in Mast, which yeah, is where, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a, I don't know when it's going to happen, but on the books, on the CIP, it could be three to five years, but there's a road widening project there. Uh, and some of that property is on City of San Diego. So we do kind of just do general cleanup there, but it's because our monument marker is there, but it's not really Santee property. Yeah, because yeah. I see how we have it's like kind of a weird area beautiful there. maples or something on one on the uh, north side. And then the island in between the lanes is really well maintained. I see our teams out there. Right. And it's like, and then there's that corner, and it just like looks like, I, I was wondering if City of San Diego, like it's like a fight over who is it responsible for it or something. So that intersection is City of San Diego. West Hills Parkway is City of San Diego. Uh, and Mast, if you go east of West Hills Parkway, Santee doesn't start to a couple hundred feet in there, oh, okay. down Mast, east of Mast. So while that corner 
it's kind of a gray area, so we don't, uh, you know, we don't spend a lot of time and money in there because it's gray. We don't know if it's kind of ours, but it's not really ours. Yeah, and so it's like we have they the dome right there, so it's like already kind of an eyesore, so I know. But then as we enter, we've got the city of Santee sign, and then like I said, right. you guys maintain the island really well, and it's beautiful. And then that those big trees on the north side came out really nice just before the nice. uh, the the community there. And so yeah, across from West Hills, and so yeah, so it's like as you enter, it gets better and better as you get into Santee there. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was just curious what the, what the side. Yeah, that's is. the stepchild of the city of San Diego. <laughs> that whole area over there that we have to fight. I don't know if you've seen the grooves from the trucks going. Oh into the, yeah, it's awful. Yeah. yeah, those grooves are like uh, ruts in the desert after a rainstorm. They're like two feet deep now. So uh, one one day maybe we'll get that corner gifted yeah. to us from. The, well, it looks good once we get into Santee. So thank you. Cool, Stephanie. Nope. Okay. Let's move on to non-agenda public comment. And do we have one? I think that the December 7th cancellation is oh, that in the Sorry, room. I forgot I don't to say. I know where in the agenda it is. Forgot to say December yeah. 17th meeting cancellation. Um, I think you guys should bring it up and then you have motion yeah. to approve of it. Cancellation. If anybody, yeah, if anybody has any comments on that, we're canceling the December 7th meeting. Okay, now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Would, would you like to comment on uh, that? Lack of agenda, and we've canceled that meeting for the past seven years consistently. Uh, we could certainly have a meeting if you all like, but uh, strictly speaking, we don't have a meeting. No, thank December. you. <laughs> thank you. Do we have the motion on that? Uh, Nick? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. So, non-agenda no, public yes, comment. We do have one speaker slip. Peter Deal. Welcome, Peter. I waited an hour for this. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I talked a lot. Oh, that's okay. Oh, are you ready? We're good. Do All it. right. Do it live. So I put in a speaker slip to do one thing, and that was to thank Sam publicly and Public Works and the, the Parks Division. I, I realized that Hurricane Hillary was a no-show, but I really recognized the way that they stepped up and addressed the fears of the community of what, you know, what could have been. Uh, and so I felt good knowing that um, the, 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 the city was there for me uh, if I needed it. Uh, I really, I recognized that they were, they had run out of sandbags, which I didn't feel I needed, um, but they ran out right away and managed to find more uh, because even if it gave people a peace of mind of having a couple of sandbags by their back door, um, you know, it really goes a long way with the residents. But as I sat there for an hour and listened to some other things, I did write down a few things. One, I'd like to say that Ken and I's tree that we planted on Arbor Day is, <laughs> is doing fantastic. <laughs> Pardon? That's right. I say nice things to it. Um, uh, my son and I really enjoy volunteering with the River Park Foundation and really find it's a great way to give back to the community. So I definitely think that um, whatever the city can do to encourage additional participation gives people a lot more um, ownership uh, in that regard. Um, Brews and Bites. I volunteered and have enjoyed doing that for, for years. And so uh, on behalf of, of Becky and myself, I challenge everybody on Spark to be out there as, as a volunteer to see this um, amazing program um, take place and be profitable and successful. And it gives you the opportunity uh, to evaluate it and come back. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I've got uh, a minute and a half um, we touched a little bit on the homeless and I really wasn't going to say anything about it and I considered saying things to city council and it's just really uh, it's really a hot button item here in Santee and we talked about some of the measures that have been uh, enacted to try to, to combat the homeless 
as an advisory committee, I would, I would challenge you guys to invite Joel Anderson to talk to you about the things that the county can do for the city. And again, I know it's, I know it's controversial, um, but one of the things that I really was... him up here and listen to him with an open mind and use your power as an advisory committee to this city to, to make a real recommendation on, on what we can do because it is a huge problem there uh, and nobody, nobody denies that uh, and there's got to be solutions out there. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's it for non-agenda. Let's go to future agenda items. Um, I would like actually to talk about now, we need to have interest or it doesn't need to be uh, uh, an agenda item, but I would really like to talk about uh, the possibility of donating some of some funds, whatever modest amount we can to the River Park Foundation. Um, I think that's a very worthy cause for, for our parks because that directly impacts all of our families that go to all of our parks along the riverbed. So, um, and usually, uh, on agenda items, we need to have some folks that are interested in it to make it an actual agenda item. Um, not always, but uh, I, I wanted to get your thoughts or feelings on that. I'd like to reach out to you because you know my feelings already. Dan. Uh, I've <clears throat> I will support that agenda item um, if, as long as we're not just looking at it as uh, a monetary contribution. If we're looking to find uh, uh, different ways that we can help the uh, River Park Foundation. Uh, I know that they need uh, additional help, um, and you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to hold it against you, but you got a lot of grant money coming in right now, and so I don't think that there. And again, we can have this conversation, but I don't, I don't, I don't see that their that their immediate need is money is money. I see it as volunteers and coordination and, okay. and things of that nature, and you know I'll I'll bring in uh, you know the Qantas Club uh, uh, to to work with that also. So yeah, I will support that idea to have the discussion. Okay, yeah, that, and this is just to to bring it back as a discussion, oh. not as monetary. I know not all things are fixed with money because you have a lot of it, and we don't have that much. But um, I, I definitely think uh, I definitely think it's something that. If we spoke about if we had an agenda, then we can come up with we can come up with thoughts and ideas on how we can help and how we can push for the volunteer, you know, the dates that they already have on the books to get to get a push of, of folks out there. And maybe, you know, we supply water and snacks or something, which I'm sure you have a budget for already. But um, it's something like that, just so we can be involved in that because I think it's such a, a good cause. So, I think having two people interested. Anyone else have a yes? Great. And Linda, okay. So I would like to bring back as a future agenda item the discussion of, um, of how Spark can support, whether it be financially or any other way, volunteer push, um, to, to talk about how we can support the River Park Foundation in their future efforts. Cool. <clears throat> uh, Next meeting date is going to be October. F I'm sorry. Anyone else have any uh, thoughts on on future agenda items? Okay. Uh, next meeting date is going to be October 5th, and we're going to have a senior and teen center update funding recommendation request. It's that time of year again for the fall fall push for some some money. Um, that's it. And with that, at a 
hour and 20 minutes. Uh, I'd like to say this meeting's adjourned. Thank you all for being here.